Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks or Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is course schedule and it is a medium level problem. So this particular problem is a direct implementation of topological sorting in graphs and uh, let us understand what topological sorting is. But let us first understand where do we need topological sorting. So in problems like these where you have been given certain prerequisites for each task. So as you can see that uh, before completing task 1 you need to complete task 0. Before completing task 2 you have to complete task 0. Before completing task 3 you have to complete task 1 and before completing task 3 again you have to complete task 2 as well. So let us take this information and represent this in a form of a graph. Right. So if I have this particular information and let's say I just move it here. So I would want to say that this is my let's say task 0 and only after I complete this I can move on to task 1. So task 1 is here. Right. So you see this is a directed edge. Again only when I complete task 0 I can move on to task 2. So task 2 is here. Again only when I complete task 1 I can move on to task 3. So from task 1 we have task 3 and only when I can complete task uh, 2 I can complete task 3. So there is a directed edge from here to here. right? So now you see there can be multiple orders or multiple ways of completing all the tasks. So let us discuss one of the ways. One of the ways is you complete 0 first. Now you can complete 1 or 2 because both of them have no pending tasks. So I can write 1 then 2 and then 3 or I can write 0, 2, 1 and 3. So you see any possible ordering like this is valid right either this one or this one that is more than one orderings are valid. Now we should understand can there be a case where this topological sorting or where there does not exist any valid ordering right. So if I draw a case like this let us say 0 depends on 1 right and 2 depends on 1 and 0 depends on 2 right. So you see in this case it is a cycle we are forming a cycle and in operating terms uh, perspective this is called a deadlock right where each of the processes is waiting for each other to release some resources but none of them is doing so right. It is similar to that thing only here we are finding us in a situation where we cannot satisfy the requirements of each of these tasks right. This is uh, in this particular case the topological sorting or the topological order will never be possible right. So now you do not need to find a cycle exactly the, the way we solve or the way we do topological sorting will automatically help you to figure out whether there is a valid ordering or not. But I am just telling you that whenever there is a cycle the topological sorting is never never possible right. So this is one case. Now how do we actually do topological sort let us come to that particular part. Now in both of these valid orderings that I have written above in the above example you see there is one common node that is present at the beginning and there is a very interesting property about this particular node right. The node is 0 it is present at the first position in both of the valid orderings and there is a very interesting property of this particular node. That property is the in degree the in degree of this node is 0 right. Why is the in degree important here because you see that these edges are denoting that this 2 is depending upon this one right and this is a directed edge from 0 to 2 right. So basically if there is a directed edge towards 2 that means there is an in degree for 2 that means all of its requirements have not been satisfied yet. Whenever the in degree becomes 0 that means I have satisfied all my requirements. If I have satisfied all my requirements I am free to take this particular node right anytime. So let us say I have satisfied the requirements of 0 here right because its in degree is 0 right. So now what I do is let us say I have a queue I push back this particular queue uh, this particular node into the queue and let us say this is my queue and this is going to be my answer vector right. I push back this node which has a in degree 0 into both of these queues and answer vector. Now let us simulate or let us visualize what happens when we complete this particular task. You will see as soon as I complete this particular task these two arrows will be removed right because they were starting from 0 but if 0 is not only there then the arrows will also not be there. Once I do all of this you will see that the in degree of 1 
was initially 1 but now the in degree of 1 has become 0. Similarly for 2, it was initially equals to 1 but now the in degree of 2 has become 0. Right. So, why did this only happen to 1 and 2? This is because 1 and 2 were the direct children or the next node in the adjacency list of 0. So, for all the nodes, for all the nodes, I am repeating it again, for all the nodes which are present in the adjacency list of the current node, right, will have their in degree decreased by 1, right. So, let me just write it. Whenever, whenever I complete a task, complete a task, all the the task that are dependent on that task will get their in degree reduced by 1, right. So, you see in a way this in degree is also representing the number of tasks it depends upon, right. As soon as my in degree becomes 0, I know that this task is not depending upon any other task and I can safely take this particular task, right. So, we were here when, when this particular uh, two nodes have their in degree equal to 0. So, we already know what happens when we when their in degree is 0. We push them into the queue and we push them into the answer vector. Now, the order of 2 and 1 does not really matter. You can either push 1 and then 2 or you can push 1 and 2, right, 2 or 1, it does not really matter. Now, the current in degree, the current in degree of 3 is 2, right the current in degree of 3 is going to be 2 which indicates that it depends on two other tasks. Now, when I process this particular node 1, when I process this particular node, I am going to remove this, right. So, once I remove this particular node, the in degree of 3, in degree of 3 is going to be 1. But it is still not sufficient enough to be inserted into my queue or my answer vector because it is still greater than 0. That basically means it still has one or more tasks pending before I complete this particular task. Now, comes the, uh, comes the turn for 2, right. When 2 will be processed, it is going to remove this particular edge and once again the in degree of 3 is going to get decremented by 1 and now it becomes 0. Now, since it has become 0, what will happen is, 3 is going to get pushed into the queue and 3 is also going to get pushed into my answer vector, right. So, answer vector will not change, but when I process elements, I will keep popping elements from the front of the queue. So, the queue will not always look like this, right. So, initially 0 was there, when I process 0, 0 will be popped and then 1 and 2 will be pushed. When I process 1, 1 will be popped, when I process 2, it will be popped and then 3 will be present, right. This is how the queue will work, but the answer vector will have all the elements together. Now, let us consider a case where we had a cycle, right. So, we had some cycle like this. Let us say this is node 0, 1 and 2. Now, you see whenever we have a cycle, none of the nodes will have in degree equals to 0. Or let us say the cycle was not our starting point. Let us say we had some dependencies like this. And let us now visualize what will happen. So, let us say this is node 5 and 6 and 7, right. So, these two nodes have in degree 0. So, initially 5 and 6 will be in my queue, right. And in my answer vector as well, 5 and 6 will be pushed. Now, once I process 5, 5 will be removed from the front of the queue and 5 will be removed from here and the in degree of 4 will now become 7. This is 7 actually. The in degree of 7 will now become equals to 1. Now, the next element in the queue is 6. So, what I do is I pop 6, I consume the element or I process it, you can say it anything and the in degree of 7 will now become 0. So, now this element 6 has also been removed. Now, since this particular element has the in degree 0, I am going to push it into my queue and push it into my answer vector, right. Now, I process the element 7. So, for that I am going to remove it from the queue. I am going to remove this particular edge and now the in degree of 1 which was initially 2 because there was one edge coming from 7 and one edge coming from 0. Now, the in degree of 1 has now become 1, right. So, in degree of 1 is 1 remaining. Now, you will see the in degree of 0 is 1 as well, in degree of 2 is 1 as well. We have some partial answer, but we will not be able to proceed from here, right. So, in this particular case, you will see whenever the answer size, 
answer size is less than the required number of nodes that is the total number of nodes that basically means we were not able to complete our topological sorting and the answer does not exist right so you see without even checking for a cycle although this is a also a valid way you can just check for the cycles and figure out whether a topological sorting is possible or not but in this particular case you don't even need to check for the cycles you just perform your simple topological sort and if at the end the answer size or the valid ordering that you have created has a size less than n that basically means all the elements or all the tasks or all the nodes are not present in the answer and that means the valid ordering was not possible right so in this particular case you just have to return an empty vector whenever it is not possible otherwise you can just return your answer vector and this will be your final ordering right so now let us have a look at the code the code is very very simple to understand it's not very difficult so the very first thing i am doing is i am going to create an adjacency list from my prerequisites vector so basically the prerequisites vector is going to be like an edge list for me right where i am denoting that from the second node i have an edge towards the first node right so i have created a graph and i have created a vector for the in degrees now what i do is in the like uh, the second element in the prerequisites edge i am going to push back the first element right because from the second there is an edge towards the first similarly since this first element is the one receiving the edge i am going to increment its in degree now i am just going to create a queue add a an answer vector and for all the nodes which have an initial in degree equals to 0 i am going to push them into the queue and push them into my answer vector now while my queue is not empty i am going to take the front node pop it from the queue and go through all the children of it now since i am removing the current element all of its children will have their in degree decremented by 1 now if the in degree of this particular child becomes equals to 0 then in this case i am going to push it into my queue push it into my answer vector and then move on now at the end if my answer size that means the valid ordering size is less than n that basically points to the fact that i was not able to like gather all the elements in this case i can just return an empty vector hence i clear my answer vector at the end if it if this condition does not trigger and my answer vector has all the elements then i'm not going to do anything and just at the end return the answer vector so let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular solution works and this code is absolutely correct so you see this passes all the test cases and this solution is correct i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really really helps the youtube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems so that is it for today till the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye bye